as I like to say, and we're live. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm Robert Lee, the executive video producer and founder of Shalala Productions, where we create marketing videos, as well as providing a live streaming service with a focus with education in the uh, medical sector, as well as a specialty in pop culture. And I'm joined here with my good friend and colleague and co-host. Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Haas. I have several YouTube channels. Yes, he's pointing to me. You can hear me, can't you? <laughs> I got, I'm getting a thumbs up. Hey, speaking of thumbs up, <laughs> thumbs up on this video. Yes, I've got uh, all things YouTube. There it was. You saw it briefly. I stream there on Mondays. It's fun. 7 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, of course. Exactly. It's 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 also uh, he's also I would like to say he's an instructor. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your program? Yes, I have a course called Be Awesome on YouTube, because who doesn't want to be awesome on YouTube? You can find out more at allthingsyoutube.com. That's right. The lessons are on my website, not on YouTube, <laughs> but they're there, and there's 32 of them that are absolutely free. Now, the last chapter is a one-time fee of 15 bucks. That's more marketing and getting eyeballs off YouTube to look at your stuff. Very high high-end, very powerful stuff, but 32 videos for free, allthingsyoutube.com. Sign up for a free account and you're off to the races and you have it forever. You know, it's not one of those things where you got to pay every month. And so be awesome on YouTube is the course and it's at allthingsyoutube.com. As they say, be there or be square. <laughs> I, I, I wish it traced the outline when I did that. I'm going to have to come up with a filter that actually puts a square outline. Oh, oh, you have the grid paper you're showing me earlier, so you can throw that up. <laughs> That's true. The grid paper with with my uh, my uh, luxury camera lens purchase, <laughs> which I'm we. Up... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just, I'm upgrading my video, so as good as my video is here, it's going to get much better. Yeah, I mean, uh, and the the lens you're saying it was like, um, oh god, I'm blanking out here. This is bad. Was it a Sigma, was it? Or correct. It's the Sigma F one point four sixteen millimeter. And it is supposed to uh it's a it's a wider angle lens and the the F stop, the F one point four means it can let a ton of light in, which is better for image quality. I mean you can't I don't have the camera yet. You just kinda of look at the lens. It's just kind of boring for the audience, but it's uh it's an upgrade, and this webcam, I'll be able to do something else with this webcam, which is probably going to go above my piano, and it'll be camera two, so you'll see an image of me looking at my monitors and my bald head. So it's going to be called the bald spot cam. <laughs> see the bald head? <laughs> I was going to say, I'll take your word for it, but okay, if you want to show it. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, I took a photography course and one of the lessons was never shoot the back of a man's head or a woman's bottom. <laughs> you know, that was the ethics for photography. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll take your word for it. But, uh, <laughs> but I thought it'd be, it might be a slight stretch, uh, since I'm pretty much engrossed and engaged in what he's talking about, I thought it'd be a perfect way that Take, have Matt take over. I'm on the topic about engagement. So have at the. <laughs> I know a lot about engaging, especially engaging on live streams, but engaging across all your social media endeavors. Um, uh, the topic is pretty short. Let me start here. You, you're going to have to put in the work. <laughs> engaging just by its very definition means you've got to do something for someone else. You need to engage them. So it's going to take you replying to questions. It's going to take you joining the conversation. So there's no shortcut to this. There's no bots that can auto answer for you in a meaningful way. Um, so you'll, you, you do have to put in the work and connect with people when they, um, when they want to reach out to you, you definitely don't want to leave anyone hanging. That is just a big no-no when it comes to engagement. If uh, 
someone's leaving interesting comments, someone asks you a question directly, answer them. Not answering them can actually hurt you. Uh, at best, it'll be neutral. At worst, it will hurt you. And neither of those is desired because it's an opportunity where you could have a more meaningful relationship with someone, even if it's just being nice or saying thank you for their contribution if they do something, uh, if they say something worthwhile in the comments that you and the community can um, can benefit from. So there's no shortcuts. Next tip would be get everything flowing to the phone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> The phone is your tether to the internet. You're not always in front of your computer parked, ready to engage. So when those YouTube comments come through, have it hit your phone. G go on to the YouTube studio app Yes, there's a YouTube app, but there's also a YouTube studio app. As a channel owner, you have a second app that's all about managing your channel and you can um, you know, have a, a, an easier window into your comments. Get on that. Are, are you getting alerts when people hit you on Twitter? Push that to your uh, messages like you know do, do you get direct message alerts if you're not finding them through the twitter app if they don't surface through notifications surface it another way you can have uh uh messages like sms messages from direct messages on twitter if you want to the, the point is there's no wrong way to to do it are you is your email address out there are you checking your email box regularly check it so don't miss engagement, use the tech and use the systems that are already out there to make sure you monitor these sources where people can get a hold of you and you respond. Now, if it gets a little crazy, you can tell your audience how best to get a hold of you. And I've had a few consulting uh, jobs with other YouTubers where they are inundated with answering questions and keeping up with their audience, especially the one client, Mark Lindsay CNC, he does instructional videos on how to run a piece of software to control a, th a three axis CNC carving machine. So it's very technical and people ask all kinds of questions about what's the speed I need to set for this. And you know, how, um, how fast should the spindle turn for that? And, you know, this type of stock, should it be set settings this way? Should I use a down cut bit up, you know? And he says he wants email. And my advice to him was like, get out of email, get out of it. Because when you respond on email, only that person is getting the benefit of your answer. His 30,000 subscribers aren't getting that. Just the 30,000th and first subscriber who emailed him is getting that. So we're, I'm trying to get him to get his own groups, Facebook group posted where other people can see the question and he can he can answer it. And there's another a couple other solutions we're, we're kicking around. But um, email is just driving him crazy where he can't he can't do anything else. The only, the only thing he has time to do is make his video and then after three hours after he uploads the video, he goes live for an hour to answer questions on the topic that he posted the video on or an open Q&A. And I'm like, well, <laughs> so, uh, anyway. So uh, uh, Matt, if, uh, if I just wanna make sure if I'm following. So the first tip is to make sure you put in the work and the, the second tip would be to make sure you use the, the technology and the mobile technology to your advantage. Yep. I, okay. And, and the second tip and a half is to, if it gets overwhelming, tell your audience how you want them to engage. And then you can turn off the channels that are too overwhelming to you. If there's a convenient way for you to be engaged, you can uh, let them know. Hey, Paul Weber's here. He says, I made it to the live. Glad <laughs> to hear Paul. He's from Love Audio Production. Hey, Paul. David Jones is here as well. Hi, David. Good to see you, Dave. Portal Woodworks is his YouTube channel. So we have Portal Woodworks in the house and Love Audio Production in the house. So, yeah, those, those are the first two tips. The second tip has a, uh, 
uh, fighter. Yeah, another another option. Right. Um. Now, let's talk about um, engaging on live streams. Couple tips there. First of all, don't ignore <laughs> the live stream audience. Follow the chat while you're delivering your content and engage people when it makes sense to engage them. Now, some say the show flow, you can have, if, if you're delivering a specific topic, you can only deliver your topic and then break for responding to the chat. That's fine too. Uh, in most cases, at least in my type of delivery, I try and uh, interact with the chat in real time, as long as what they're saying kind of jives with the um, with the content, but definitely interact with the chat room when they post something meaningful or they ask you a question. And I like to say the channel name of the person, even if the channel name is different than first name, last name. I like to to say so on on YouTube, if Paul Weber was there, he would be in the chat as Love Audio Production. And I, I if I would read his comment or show his comment on the screen, I would say Love Audio Production says, and then I would rather than say Paul said, because you know, I know his name's Paul. And I might even say to the audience, Oh, that's my friend Paul Weber. But you know, it's good to give them the shout out. I mean, people like because you know they're on YouTube and you know they're they they have a video show and they want their show you know talked about so um and there's Paul I, right I, now yeah there he is now he's here under Facebook and Facebook is his first name last name like everyone is but see, D David Jones he never goes by David Jones because there's a lot of people named David Jones it's a very common name so um he like when, when he comes on, I'll say, oh, there's Portal Woodworks. That's my friend, David Jones. And then from there on out, I'll, I'll just say Portal Woodworks thereafter because it just, it gives them a little bit of advertising every time they do that. And they like it. I like it. I, I like giving, you know, people in my chat room a little bit of advertising. That's, that's a give and take. I, I'll do that all day long because I'm happy they're there. I'm happy they're engaging with, they're making my show better. Why not? So. Yeah, I, uh, that's, that's a good tip as, as well. Um, now, sure. if you're multi-streaming, here's, here's a caveat to this. This does not apply to everyone. So this is if you're streaming in more than one service at a time. Um, it can be very easy to ignore an entire social media location. So if you're streaming to Twitch and you're streaming to Facebook and you ignore Twitch, Oh, that's bad. That's bad, bad, bad. I had a uh, a friend do that, and he was streaming to Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, and something else. There was something else he was streaming to. He was streaming to four four locations, and the Twitch people never got any answers. They never got any engagement, and people were getting mad, and it actually hurt the the host is not good. Yeah, that can't be fun. Yeah, so um, if you're multi-streaming, definitely monitor both chat um, sources. Rob Thomas is here. Hi, Rob. Yeah, he jumped in the leader group there a couple days in. Good to see him in there. It's got the little hand wavy thing. 400 David Jones in Georgia. I'm not sure what that means. I think when you're making an earlier reference about how there's a lot of David Jones and oh oh name. just 400 of them. wow wow I am the only Matthew Haas in my county but there's plenty of other Matthew Haas out there 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 is a assistant superintendent named Matt Haas <laughs> and he is in the news all this he's all over the interwebs and so I'm like no I'm not Matt Haas Assistant Superintendent of blah 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 school district. <laughs> bum bum bum. Yeah. <laughs> but by golly, I've got matthaas.com since I was a wee lad, and now recently I have matthaas.com with the misspelling of my last name. 
that was a fight. It took me one decade to wrestle that domain name out of the owner's, <laughs> the previous owner's hand. He would not give it up. And he teased me. He would only, he would only have it for one year. He, would, he wouldn't register three years, five years, 10 years at a time. He would every year. And every year would get close. And every year he would renew it right at the last moment. I was like, Argh! He finally let it go and I got it. Exactly. The hand-waving guy is my trademark. Oh, how about that? Good on you. The, the taco emoji is, is my trademark. Because <laughs> I love me some tacos. <laughs> I almost thought that was a fish. <laughs> no, it's my. It's a. And not only is it a, a a taco, it's a sparkly taco. And look, it it has one of those things where that, you know, you can. The little sequins, like you can almost spell a. Yeah, look at that. Did you see a letter? <laughs> is that H? H? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. This this was a uh, Dave and Buster's. Uh, <laughs> I was all about the Dave and Buster's before the pandemic, man. Let me tell you. Hey, hey. John Kavaleski's here. Hi, John. Welcome back to Verbose Wednesdays with Robert and Matt. Yeah, so we're talking about engagement. So. Uh, <laughs> See, okay, Rob can back me up here because he thought it was like a dish. See, I thought it was a, I don't know why. Oh, yeah, I thought it was a fish, but no, fish works well too, so. No, it's a taco. Um, nom, 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 Which is why I'm glad that there's a taco emoji to, that we could use. <laughs> <laughs> I love tacos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my poor meetup group has been defunct. I had a meetup group called We Fucking Love Tacos. And I would say, we're meeting here on this date, RSVP. I'd get 40 people RSVP, 25 would show up because a lot of people were no-shows. And I would eat tacos with 25 strangers every month. It was great. Well, at least we know that tacos is a, is a good engaging topic and uh, and a good food, good source of protein, I guess. Who doesn't love tacos, man? I'm telling you, it was very popular. <laughs> but I, I found out it was all... 45 to 55 year old women that were looking for hookups <laughs> was really kind of what, what it ended up being. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. First we talk about tacos and you're saying that's a draw. What? I tell you, these, these ladies, man, they were ravenous. They, they were, they, they were looking for dates, man. Let me tell you. I was like, well, I just want to eat tacos with strangers, but that's what it ended up being. According to Google, there are, 19,865 people named David Jones in the United States. What, what, what? I bet you that's even larger because, uh, wow, yeah. That's a lot of David Joneses. Okay, so he, Rob was saying. Was a typo, oh. fish. Yeah, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so what does, uh, does the audience have any tips on engagement on live streams? I think I've covered, you know, the, the, the and you know, the, the point is, you know, live streams are all about engagement. You shouldn't be live streaming unless you want to engage your audience. Live stream is uh, all about making the audience you have a more, I don't know, Let's see. John says, I almost didn't make it. My PC decided to stop working about 20 minutes before I was supposed to go live, tore it all apart, put it back together, and here I am engaged with you guys. See, <laughs> I, I love the resourcefulness that John has in terms of just tackling tech issues. And I'm like, I, you know, I, with me, I probably get a, a fear of getting electrocuted and stuff like that. So to hear him just try to like. He seems he seems pretty fearless with, with the tech. That's that's for sure. Yeah. Um which is good because you shouldn't shouldn't be afraid of the tech. I I'm a tinkerer too, man. I, I see. I, I have a bit of like a, a, a Tim Taylor type of tinkering mentality where I'll dive in, but if I'm not careful, <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I try not to uh, blow anything up, but I will push buttons. I will flip cables. I will, I will, uh, and I like I like the problem solving too. Like I, I had a tech, I had a tech issue that I problem solved. I even ran it by my expert, 
love audio production, Mr. Paul Weber. Um, oh, here's a tip. Let's see. Four tip. If multi-streaming, don't make the mistake of accidentally ignoring your audience. Monitor all chats. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I don't know who said that. But well, no. That, I'm just... <laughs> was it, was I, that, uh, uh, I was just summarizing like what you're saying. So that okay, way, I'm good, good. Up, so. I'm saying, yeah, well, whoever said that has a, we, we think alike because I actually said that. Got it. Got it. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Yeah. So what was I saying before that? Shoot. I lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah. I ain't scared of no tech. He says, <laughs> good, John. Good. No. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 my, my tech issue. So like I have a, um, I have two, analog audio devices i have this television with a headphones out and i have this piano with the headphones out but my roadcaster pro has one headphone input so i bought a little a b box so i can switch them <laughs> so what? i could connect my piano and my tv output to it to a uh 3.5 millimeter earphone you know just a little headphone jack thing right has, has a little button and i'm going to say okay piano and then the mixer's going to see it as the piano i go tv because i play pandora through the tv and I, I work with pandora going through the mixer and then the mixer going through my yamaha studio speakers anyway it's just a little tech thing like i'm not afraid to like experiment with tech get things working 5.5 tip engagement be as natural as you can be. Nice, Paul Weber. Yes, exactly. That's that's a skill that you develop time on task. Like you got to put in the hours to get better at being natural and talking to the camera as if there's someone talking back to you. Because, of course, I'm talking to you, Robert, but, you know, when, you, when you're talking to someone in the chat, there's a delay. So if you ask the chat a question, mm -hmm. even if they respond instantly when they hear it, it's still going to be 15, 20, 25 or longer seconds before. So that's another thing as a host to get, keep engagement going is to realize there's a delay in, in the uh, communication pathway. And also to ask, the audience questions. Now, of course, the, they, they can feel encouraged and feel free to just post whatever they want, ideally on topic in the chat room, but prompt them, ask them questions. Like what is better, tacos or ice cream? <laughs> Let me know in the chat. And there is one correct answer, by the way. Wait, there's one? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Folks, uh, I don't know if you could mix ice cream with tacos. Oh, you know, taco. taco. I had a choco taco on uh, on the Fourth of July. There was there was a, a vendor at uh, like a little uh, ice cream truck, and we were walking to the ice cream truck, and we were gonna walk by the arsenal. Uh, like, like it was all roped off, but we went under the ropes and all these people came out. You can't go through here. You can't go through here. You got to go around. I'm like, oh, we're trying to get the ice cream truck. He goes, no, no, that's the fireworks there. You can't get close. I'm like, excuse me. Did you not hear me? I said I was trying to get ice cream. Ice cream is more important than the safety of fireworks. Anyway, so we got one vote for steak, <laughs> one vote for ice cream, one Whoa. vote for beer and one vote for tacos. My two votes. Well, so I don't know how we can tabulate a winner since we had four different answers when there was a, a two question <laughs> response or two answer response, but okay. <laughs> well, well, since, since yeah. there's Choco tacos, I'll take ice cream as, as a vote for taco. Wait, so our vote counts is what you're saying? Well, maybe you're the tie break. Well, I vote tacos. So there's two for tacos. What's, what's your vote? Oh, Wait, I, th I think we, we might have a, I don't know, is, oh, is someone's voting being retracted? Did I say steak? Yes, you did. <laughs> Maybe well, he meant steak tacos. Okay. Is that so what that, you meant, John? You know, it, but. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was a quick trick answer right there. So I had steak for dinner. We had fillets on the grill, baby. Come on. God, I don't know what I'm having for dinner. Uh, what did I have for lunch? 
I thought it was a trick question. Robert or Rob Thomas, when I talk about tacos, it's always dead serious. Mental note. <laughs> I was going to say no mas, but then I'd be uh, accused of combining a hybrid name of Matt and Haas and calling Moss. Never mind. Ooh. There no, you go. No There's, Haas. No Haas. <laughs> See, but then I would think of the show Bonanza there, you know? So, but. Breaking Bad had an episode called No Moss. Was that a tribute to Bonanza? No, it was a. It was a, a much more deep concept because the show was about kingpins and blah, blah, blah. But yeah. All right. I'll, I'll take your word. <laughs> have, have you ever seen Breaking Bad? Who, me? With Brian Cranston? Yeah. On, on Netflix. On, well, it was AMC initially, but it's on Netflix now. Uh, I haven't seen an episode entirety, just bits of it. Oh, oh Robert. Man. It is probably the best or second definitely top five entertainment products of all time movies television books video game whatever is a breaking bad breaking video? bad breaking bad is a masterpiece of entertainment it, it's it's so far ahead of everything else and do you know why i'll tell you why if you want why, you want to go that? off the rails we're already off the rails and beyond, so go ahead. Here's why Breaking Bad is the best. The writing team mm -hmm. storyboarded out all four seasons day one. And they 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 had it completely cohesive f from not only from season to season, but episode from episode. And the the protagonist slipped into madness very slowly and at a regular pace. And the, the writing was so, it was just so good. The actors were so good and it, they took the time to do it. Most pilots, you know, shows, they, they do like a little, a little quip of every character. They didn't do that. They introduced the character slowly when it made sense. It, and it was, it was just a, a masterpiece. It was so good. The last episode, this is a true story. Okay. The, 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 the Walt and his, his wife were having a scene and they were getting real with each other and it was real emotional. And they had to cut the scene and do it over again because the cameraman started crying and it picked up on the audio. That's how powerful this show was and the anyway breaking bad breaking bad brian cranston it's amazing so rob asks wasn't that the show about brian cranston character making meth or something yep. i already cut part of the first episode yes that's exactly what it is and it is a crazy ride crazy <laughs> it, it's it is amazing i mean you, you have this this uh this middle well middle-aged guy that went nowhere in his life, uh, struggled all his life, got kicked all his life, was a laughing stock, was a total nobody. And uh, he turned his life around by being a, a, a drug king. But he got, and, it, and again, it didn't happen overnight. It was, it was a slow progression. It was so brilliant and it was tragic and it was horrifying and it was funny and it was, it was just a, an emotional roller coaster, brilliantly story. And, you know, unlike any type of production that was ever put together, because because they had it all mapped out and and they followed the plan the whole way through. Nothing, nothing has been put together. Yeah, he was great in Malcolm in the Middle. That, this was so much more than Malcolm in the Middle. See, that's, that's why I remember Brian Cranston. So when it came out, I, I always thought it was funny to see oh. Malcolm's dad just doing a lot of crazy things. Man, no, let me tell you. And he's, his character was very Malcolm in the middle, like, like I said in the beginning, because he, he was a teacher and he was, you know, scraping by and he was just belittled and he would cower and he would fight back and he would, you know, it was just 
life was just cruel to this man and he was doing the best he can. He loved his family and he was, and then something changed and he was just like, that's, and it got to the point where he's like, he made a speech. He's like, man, he's like, not anymore. He's like, I'm, I'm going for it. He's just like, it was, it was great. It was, it was, ins- you got to watch this from beginning to end. It's, it's insane. It's an insane show. Yeah. A descent into madness says Rob Thomas. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. And it was, oh man. And it was, oh. and then, you know, some people get too close and there was murder and there was espionage and there was, it all the stuff that you you would think there would be there's you know there's there's rival gangs and there's other kingpins and and there's the distribution network and there's the manufacturing of facilities and how they hit it all and it was whole and and you know, the the guy had moles in in the in the government agency <laughs> it was insane I'm like holy cow this thing is insane anyway good entertainment. It was good entertainment. Oops. Battlestar Galactica is on that same level too. The reboot of Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying to wrap my head on the uh on the uh <laughs> on breaking bad. I mean I only know by by reputation and show, so uh <laughs> you know, I mean <sighs> and now from Breaking Bad to Prison Break. Was- yeah, I don't watch Prison Break, but uh, I think is that like a show on Fox or something? Or I'm going to assume that Matt likes Breaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, or as I mean- as uh, John would say, choo choo. <laughs> he had he had posted a um, an earlier response, and I thought they were pictures of like. Breaking Bad uh, characters like in their in their meth suits, but then when I take a look at a close look at the chat, they're actually uh, trains, <laughs> as in as the idea of just like going off the rails kind of a thing. Oh so. my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is why I still wear glasses, folks. Not to say that I wouldn't, just because um... it was on Fox. Prison Break is pretty intense. Cool, cool. Okay. But I think- yeah, I mean, Breaking Bad just just the 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 way they created the show from beginning to end was just it was just unlike anything that's been created ever again. Because mostly a pilot is, you know, they 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 write the first four episodes, hope it gets picked up, and then they'll they'll slap together episodes five through ten, and then they won't even think about next season because it might not even happen. That's not what they did. They every season they had an outline and no who who does that who manufactures a show like that but they did they 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 thought they had something from the beginning and they manufactured it but they produced it as if they were going to be successful and by golly they were successful and paul chimes in netflix but like how many prisons can one guy get into then break out of which <laughs> Kind of reminds me of the old adage of Gilligan's Island, where it's only a three-hour tour. Yeah. You know, it's almost wonder like maybe that's where they got the idea for Prison Break, but that's kind of a big stretch. Oh, I loved Gilligan's Island. They had had all modern facilities made out of bamboo and, and you know coconuts. <laughs> They couldn't get. They couldn't make a boat, but they they could make infrastructure and, and yeah, structured houses to live in. Anyway. Robert Nepper and prison break as Theodore Bagwell, and that's an intense character, brilliant, diabolic, undisturbed. How I Met Your Mother did that. They had a prison break on How I Met Your Mother. That's a pretty wild show if they had that. Yeah, I although that's a comedy though. I Neil think. Patrick Harris was brilliant in How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> I'm a huge Neil Patrick Harris fan. <laughs> I, you know, clearly I, I need to uh, brush up on the, on on those shows because I've only heard either by reputation or only catch bits of it's like on uh, YouTube. Wow. So. If if there's two things that someone should watch, it's Breaking Bad and the reboot of Battlestar Galactica. 
that's another great show, Battlestar Galactica. Be pretty trippy to try to see it at the same time. Battlestar Galactica was so good, they made a sketch on Portlandia. Did you, did you ever watch Portlandia? Uh, again, a show I'm familiar with. I just haven't yeah. seen an episode yet. The two actors from Saturday Night Live got together and did a sketch comedy show called Portlandia. And uh -huh. the sketch was a husband and wife decided to blow off a dinner party with friends to watch Battlestar Galactica on DVD. They had the whole thing on DVD and it's, so, it was so good. They, they ruined their lives because they wouldn't stop watching it back to back to back to back to back. And then, you know, they're not paying their bills. They, they, they get fired from their jobs. They just couldn't stop watching Battlestar Galactica. It's, like, it's funny. I corrected my comment above. Yes. That's what I was trying to say. It says, no, I'm, oh, how I met your mother. I was gonna say him. I don't think you spelled him that way. All laid oh, they did lay it out like Breaking Bad. Good, good for them. Good for them. So are we saying that how I met your mother is plagiarizing uh, Prison Break? No, wait, Breaking Bad. No, he's, he's, he's saying that they used a production technique similar to Breaking Bad. Yeah, I, the only thing I remember is when they had the kids listening in, the dad telling the story, they had pre-taped it all in advance so that way it avoids the problem where naturally when the show progresses when they film that as kids they're going to be naturally older and it'd be kind of hard to reshoot so they did a smart thing and just did it all all ahead of time so that way when they bring it in it's as new but in actual actuality it was already taped which probably would have been awkward if you had the say had the young character play herself seven years older the play herself seven years younger you know they had a similar problem with it and it chapter two, the movie from Stephen King's it where they had the young kids and then they made the second one a couple years later and the kids grew up, but they rehired the kids and they CGI them younger. <laughs> they, they literally did. Cause, cause they looked older, but they wanted them to, to be that seriously. Well, I, I know I agree with you, but I'm like, you and, know, save some money if they did the other way. <laughs> and and the the one boy, his voice was changing, and they thought they had to get another actor, but he was able to do some voice coaching and make it sound the same. Yes, how I met your mother was all laid out ahead of time, and the ending sucked. Well, yeah, Breaking Bad's ending didn't suck. I'll tell you that much. Did or did not. Breaking Bad's ending did not suck because okay. it's 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 the best entertainment product of all time is what I was saying. Right. Well, that's why I asked for a correction because yeah. I yeah. thought I didn't hear right. No, no, it it, uh, <laughs> it did not suck. <laughs> for the record, your honor, uh, Matt Haas had said that Breaking Bad's ending had not sucked. <laughs> that's my best Atticus Finch I could muster up. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So, uh, <laughs> engagement, engage your audience, which is uh, what we're doing right now. Just, uh, it may seem like we're going off the rail, but with a purpose. I don't have a mic to drop, so that's the closest thing I have. <laughs> so, <laughs> our mics are expensive. Don't drop them. <laughs> Unless you got a good buy, either at Amazon or Best Buy or any other stores. Um, yeah, even even if you get the uh, Best Buy uh, employee discount, don't don't drop your expensive mics. And, and since we're since we're still on the subject about engagement, uh, right behind, oh, right. I still got to get my left and right hands down. It'll but, never come to you. I've been yeah. doing it for it's 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 always wrong. <laughs> and I was like, your left got to think you're right, and your right has to think you're left, and I'm thinking left, and it's like. Start out deliberately trying to do it wrong, and you will, by happenstance, do it right. That's the only way to trick your brain. See? See? So <laughs> on, on that note, um, as you can kind of see behind me, um, there's the, the vMix logo. And uh, giving them a slight shout-out just because we're trying to enter a, a contest of just to be able to win a, a free update to the, for, their, for their online – I'm sorry, for the, for the software just because it's – one of the things that we're using to do live live streaming. And so should, should I, should I dare show, show what I showed you earlier? Please. Oh my gosh. You guys, you, you, you gotta watch this. 
Robert's brilliant. So uh, I, you know, uh, full full confession. You know, my brother, God love him. He's such a creative guy. I had to ha have him help me out here. So he had staged the the photo there to emphasize since the fact that we can only post with a photo in a 30 character or less as to whether it's either giving him a sob story or to try to incorporate oh god i just blanked out on the uh phil, phil collins. collins uh phil collins oh no jacket require album whether like a review of it and so it was a matter of just combining the text referencing their song as well as trying to paint the picture as to why why i really really needed the upgrade and so no joke in april a tree as you can see and still boarded up oh wait well anyway you can see the photo thank you matt of the window had uh the tree had pretty much damaged the window and so we had had to simulate just to show show them where it was and in addition to that I know you, it may be hard to see, but in the monitor is actually the the the, the jacket of <laughs> of um, no jacket require. That's Phil Collins' head in the in the V mix um, monitor there, and it's actually as you can see, this is that's my setup as how I'm streaming right now. Uh, before we did the uh, studio upgrade there, I mean the decorating there by my brother Josh Lee. Thank you, uh, and we just you know cramp as much as we could in the photo and that's what we came up with with our entry so so hopefully <clears throat> sorry starting to sound like pete brady's hitting puberty when it's time to change um hopefully we'll be able to to come away with a winner but come august 17th if you see me kind of like you know you know why or if i come up like ah! you'll know why uh, i gotta say that is a brilliant entry brilliant you had the puns in the text and you had the branch crashing through the window you had vmix logos all over the place uh very well thought out and definitely worth a win that's I, that's I, right I, I was i was gonna change the subject well when, when we're ready to break i want to go into something else <laughs> <laughs> i i thought you're gonna make a pun about baking brad when you do that so well, I I don't want to make any breaking bad puns because you're not familiar with it, and then you wouldn't you wouldn't get it. Yeah, but at least the audience would. So, all right, here's a breaking bad pun. Science, bitch. <laughs> See. Well, doesn't, doesn't, well, that's the uh, uh, Aaron Paul's character, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, he did not say those two words as dialogue in the show. He said, "Yeah, science." Oh, I thought you said he said the last word a lot. He did say the last word a lot, but he didn't say that word at that scene, which is quoted and is really the quote that capitalizes that that encompasses the whole show. And it was, it was never actually said in the dialogue. But anyway, <laughs> um. it's all good, man. It's all good. So, uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> I got a technical question. Let's hear it. Okay, so uh, someone from the maker community asked me, if you were to buy a new computer computer for video editing, what would you get? And I gave him the answer if he is a Mac, if he's Mac or, you know, Mac or PC, and he's not Mac. So the question is, what is the computer someone should buy for video editing? This is not live streaming, so it's not the, Alienware R9 for streaming. It doesn't have to be that. I don't know what to tell them. What should I tell someone who's asking for what type of computer to buy to edit videos on Windows? And go. <laughs> so here's the thing, folks. It's not so much the name brand or the type of computer. It's more about the guts inside it to do it. So, I mean, you, you could, I mean, as long if you had a Dell or a, I was going to say compact, but I don't think that's, they're in, in service anymore uh <laughs> but it's just more about making sure you got a powerful cpu to run the whole sucker and making sure that the graphic card is as as new as you can get it if if if, if that's such a word newer um as well as just making sure that you have the hard drive space to to store the the video 
that you're creating or just the the the, the software to run it. Um, so I'd say it's not so much the, the name brand, but the configuration of it. So I mean, I, I've had some people that would just go to like the to the computer store, like a micro center, and just make sure that they've got the parts in it they're creating. Or even if you talk with a tech there as to like what parts they recommend for it, yeah. you know, they'll, they'll give you a good advice. So, um, so I know it's kind of weird for me to say I'm not brain brain brand the name brand uh, specific, but just more the specs of it as to what you need to be able to do that. So John Kavaleski says HP Omen because they it has the power and is upgradable. See, my, my typical response would be, you know, at least 16 gigs of RAM, if not 32, get a i7 or i9 processor, decent graphics card, the base model for under 1,000, and put at least 30 gigs of RAM into it. HP Omen. Let me, let me look that up. <laughs> it's like getting the – oh, God. I'm just blanking out here. Yeah, so – Oh, it's, it's uh, a laptop, gaming desktop. Oh wait. yeah, it's not uncommon to, to hear folks using gaming desktops or laptops for no, their is, yeah thousand ninety nine dollars for the ON thirty L desktop. Windows ten eight oh eight gigs of memory, dear lord. <laughs> uh, nope. But yeah, I see what he's saying. You you got to punch it up. Yeah. Right. So the bottom line is punch it up. And if you wanted to check out the device that John had listed, it's the, let me pull that up again, HP Omen, because the power is upgradable. So, yeah, I mean, definitely if you're able to start strong, go with that. But if not, just make sure that the computer you get is one that you can upgrade, whether it's the, the RAM, the graphics card, as well as being able to, like, to upgrade the, the solid state drive to be able to run the sucker. So is the graphics card really needed for video editing. Well, I mean, if you, it depends the type of editing you're working on, like if you do like uh two or 3d type of uh, graphics, that's like a, a big memory hard. I mean, especially if you're going to try to do stuff that's CGI related, you want to def- make sure you got the, the juice to be able to keep up. And as always, I I've, I'll often add that I reserve the right to be wrong too. So, yeah. and John says, I'm, I'm actually answering the guy now. I okay. hear the HP. Omen. Uh, let's see, John and Rob says yes. I'm I'm guessing to what I said about me being reserving the right to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they might be confirming the specs of. The computers. Okay. Of the computer. So, we'll, we'll, unless uh, John Rob, unless I'm miss. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Rob saying like if you add After Effects or things like that, it'll make a big difference. Yeah. I mean, the the the, the desktop I use is a uh, it's a power spec uh or g351 or whatever it is but it's just more about the guts of it uh that matter oh hang on let me just uh see if i can pull up the specs there just to illustrate the point i mean for me it's i think both what i can afford and to um what i can use so oh most to- software allows you to put the processing load of editing to the gpu not the cpu so you can so you do need a good graphics card yeah yeah now, see, on Macs, it's a little different. Like, on Macs, at least for streaming, it's all on the hardware encoding for the processor, and the graphics card has very little to do with how well you stream. But on a Windows, you can do what John Kowalewski is saying. You can offload the the, the burden to the GPU. Yeah. You can't do that on a Mac. Right. I've been custom uh, building for 20 years, says Rob Thomas. See, I made the mistake when I was... 25 of buying individual computer parts and cobbling them together into a working tower and trying to sell them for more than the sum of all the parts. And I was hit in the face with a proverbial brick because the opposite is true. You want to buy a computer, break it down and sell the parts. Then you make profit. (laughs) No, (laughs) I was completely on the wrong side of that business model. But anyway, I hear you. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, much not much more I can add than it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't go into business by making full PCs off of individually purchased parts. And you won't make a profit. You'll lose yeah. money. And just the comments are coming in slow, so I apologize, John. But yeah, like John says, most software is allow you to buy the processing load. David's uh, gotta go. Thanks for stopping by, David. Thanks, Dave. Uh, the GPU, not CPU, so you need a good graphic. Yep. And for me, like I, I have a bad habit of, of having too many things open, so that's why I, I look into like the CPU because I'll not only have the editing software running, but I'll have the browser opening because because if I have to look something up, whether it's like a YouTube video to find something, or if I need to run another um, program in the background, so uh, that's why I've got to have them both tandem. And what's it, Rob says? Make a difference. Uh, Harris Heller built a PC that has two PCs in the one box. He's got a, an upper PC and a lower PC <laughs> and he streams, he, he, does, he runs the game, the computer game on one and he streams on the other. It's it's one box with two PCs in it and it's liquid cooled. It's badass. I love it. So John's running an HP Omen with eight gigs GPU and 32 gigs of RAM, 3.2 gig, eight core processor and it's a monster. Woohoo! Nice. Rob's been custom building for 20 years. And I know Rob just made a comment, worked several custom building shop, never sold custom machine. I just custom build myself. Yeah. Can't go wrong with custom, especially if you, if you have the, the right parts you need to get it. Well, with custom is something goes wrong, you're on the hook to fix it yourself because the graphics card's going to blame the memory. The memory is going to blame playing the GPU, you know, the, the, there'll be a circular firing squad of blame if something goes wrong, but you know, that's why I usually like when I go that route, I have someone that's uh, <laughs> skill, more skilled than I to put it together. So that way yeah. I don't have to worry about that. But to your point, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the biggest challenge just making sure that not only you got the right parts that they're, but they're talking together. I wanted to redo my setup and I was seriously going to jump on the windows train and, and go that route. But I'm like, I just, I can't do it just can't do it i would love to get one of those liquid cooled you know pcs and just build it out but oh i just couldn't do it <laughs> just couldn't do it couldn't bring myself to do it maybe i will if if max go the way i think they're gonna go now now they're switching out the chips they're gonna have essentially the ipad chip is gonna be the chip in the computers Apple's A chip. They're going to move off of Intel. I'm like, oh God, oh Nelly. Exactly. But <laughs> it might it might get ugly. Well, we want any fisticuffs to to happen as a result. So, well, if I do, I'll I'll sell my MacBook Pro and I'll maybe I'll buy an Alienware R9 and but get VMix installed and jump ship. If you do, are you going to like dress up full Alien regalia mode? <laughs> if, if you want me to, Robert, I will. Well, I'll leave it up to you because, you know, of course, you know, it's all in the budget. So well, well, <laughs> what kind of alien is the question? I, you know, I leave it in your good hands because I'm sure it will be one that will uh, be out of this world. So uh, can I be a xenomorph from from the aliens franchise? <laughs> if it works for you. And then I'll, my, I'll, I'll scream like this and then my tongue's going to come out with its own little screaming mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you're gonna use like a kazoo or like some sort of a party stream or something. Well, I could do that too. Look at this. John Kavaleski says I will be building one like Harris's soon. I have already ordered the case. So sweet, John. That is so sweet. And Rob, oops, sorry, Harris's guys. PC is like a beast. It is a beast for VR soon. Hmm. And I tell you what, man, that liquid cooling stuff does the job. Like it is a miracle device. And you 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 can balls to the wall those machines and it'll be nice and cool. It'll be 67 degrees Celsius just purring along and you're you can, you can be streaming, you know, 
4K, 60 frames a second, <laughs> multiple cameras. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can throw whatever you want at it, and it'll be nice and cool. <laughs> I'll, 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 uh, I'll take your word for it. Oh, man. Yeah. Man, it's harsh. It's hard, especially, you know, with these apps. I mean, like if you have – if you've got four cameras in your streaming gig, if rig, plus sharing the desktop, the software has to render all five of those devices at all times, whether you're showing it on screen or not. So that it's cranking through, you know, 60 frames a second on all four cameras. <laughs> plus, anyway, it's – it's intense. Then I'll have to buy some long cables because I want that machine in my shop. <laughs> just put, put fire extinguishers all around it just in case it, it goes. And Rob asked, do you guys have a micro center store around your areas? The answer is yes. It's uh, a couple towns over. So, um, so most likely if I need to get anything, I'll probably do it online. I, I don't know what that is. Is that a brand or is that a type of store? It's it's a store. Oh, it's like the how do I put this? It's it's they sell a lot of computer gear and stuff. It'll it's like the B and H of computers is the best way I could put it. Okay. They have a lot oodles of stuff, and I have to be careful not to um, yeah uh, camp out there for the night to look at the stuff I need. My version of that is Apple.com and Amazon.com. <laughs> exactly. So, um, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I was going to say the wrap up with your final point, but uh, I, I think we kind of uh, hammer the point about just being able to engage with the audience, which uh, I just feel like it's it's been a long time coming just to be able to, to chat with the with the folks here it's, as a, uh, yeah, it was fun. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. Appreciate that. Oh, Rob adds, Micro Center has some cool water cooler, PC, and a demo. See, every time I think of water coolers, I just think of like the old, you know, the office water coolers, which I know um, it's different than what you guys are talking about. So Very different. Very different. Which I'll, I'll take y'all word for it. So uh, <laughs> I want to water cool my Mac, but that's very hard to do. Yeah, so I won't give you the water bottle for that then. Um. Well, my friend Jim Dockrell says just pour ice water over the top of the laptop while you're streaming. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. If you get but, someone in, in your chat named Dim, named Jim Dockrell, uh, just his comments might be along the same lines. Fair warning. <laughs> Fair warning. <laughs> well, thanks for the heads up. <laughs> he's, 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 we, speaking of engagement, when you get someone like Jim Dockrell in your chat, it's like, it'll be like, interesting comment, helpful comment, interesting comment, totally off the wall, bonkers comment, interesting comment. <laughs> it's like, he, 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 you have to pre read all of his stuff because one in 10 is going to be a zinger. <laughs> I can relate. So, <laughs> anyway. So I'll just say that I, I've been warned, but if I forget, at least it's on me. So, uh, so, uh, so the wrap up, uh, the five points we had here was the first tip was to put in the work. Uh, second tip is to use tech and mobile tech to your advantage. 2.5. If the tip gives over tech is overwhelming, tell audience how to engage. So if, if Twitter is your, your jam, have them go to Twitter or if, if uh, Facebook or or you if YouTube go go with the one that you're comfortable with, um, like what we're doing right now. In case you talk with the audience, <laughs> uh, and if you're multi-streaming, just make sure that you don't make the mistake of accidentally ignoring your audience when you and you want to make sure you monitor all your chats, and then ask audience questions. I think that's everything. Did I miss anything, Matt? Very good. All right. So with that, folks, if you missed anything, just hit the rewind or just watch the last part of the, of the tips. And um, just before we wrap up, just a reminder that, um, you know, if you're looking ways to help, uh, just go to blacklivesmatter.com or the NAACP and 
and I'm, I'm still offering the live streaming service uh, for folks that are looking to support the hospitals and the medical frontliners. And uh, let me just uh, get the, the link there because I know it's a mouthful uh, that you can go there and you can just contact me uh, direct and be glad to. Uh, that is one heck of a long URL you got there, Robert. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I know like uh, I haven't got around to talk to my web developer to try to shorten that, but uh, it's in the works. Oh, and hang on. Let me just get uh, John's information. There it is. If anyone's interested... Oh my gosh, $617 for the for the case John bought. John John put his case. And in the chat. Oh, let me just try that again. That's so that links there in so you can find that in the in the discussion stream there. So, um so that's about it. So until then, Stay safe, everyone. Uh, you've been watching Robos Wednesdays with Robert Lee and Matt Haas. Oh, wait. Do we still have... Uh... Wait, you want to do it? Yeah, hang on. Let me find it. Oh, it's in the next room. Hang on, folks. What? Watch this. This, this is going to be worth it. Hang around here. I'm not sure if we're going to call this a new segment or not, but uh, we've done it the last time. So it wouldn't... All right. I'm ready for it. Go ahead. Oh, oh, you want it? Okay, here, here it comes. All right. Merp, 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 merp. Hang on. Oh wait, I'm I'm going the wrong way. Oh! <laughs> here, pass it back. <laughs> oh wait, okay. <laughs> See that? Look at that. Okay, it's coming back at you. It's coming back at you. Right, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Boop. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he messed it up. <laughs> And that's why it's always important to do a little bit of practice before you go on live, folks. <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. You've been watching Roast Wednesdays with uh, Robert Lee and Matt Haas. Stay safe, everyone, and uh, look forward to see everyone soon. Later. Stay awesome. Oh, hang on. I had it here. Sorry, guys. Get the outro going. Yep. Uh, where to go? Where to go? Oh, there it is. We're back. We're back. Sorry about that, guys. Next week, I'm going to have much better video. I'm getting, upgrading my video. You can look forward to that. All right. What's going on with this silly thing? Sorry, folks. <laughs>